So I'm Alpha Jonathan. My nickname is Lucky Noob. Lucky Noob. I'm from Indonesia. I took a, a what do you call it? A computer science, a computer science, uh, and then uh, for my for my bachelor degree, it's a computer science, and then. Uh, in 2010, sorry, 2011, uh, I took a, a short course about uh, semiconductor in uh, electronic engineering in Australia. I started overclocking uh, when I was in still junior high school. So um, I started overclocking because, well, I want to play games. I want to play games and uh, I want my games to have better frame rate. And while well, at my age it's quite expensive, the game that I want is quite, you need high system requirement. It's Quake 3 by the way. And uh, you need fast CPUs, you need fast graphic cards, and well, I cannot afford it. So what I do, I took a cheap CPU, the Celeron 300A, and turned it and overclock it to 450 and I get like this massive boost of performance. You know, computers just used, used to be like a lot slower than we have today. Even even you want some, you know, multimedia task like video conversion. It took, you know, a really really high computing horsepower that we didn't have at that time. So basically overclocking is also been done on not only on the low end system but on the high end system as well. Like, I mean, 10 years ago, computer was not as fast as we have right now. So yeah, the original bottlenecks uh, usually like gaming performance and like if you want to do uh, your PC to do some multimedia task. My best moment in overclocking uh, is when I went to this overclocking competition called MSI Master Overclocking Arena 2008. And that was one of my first uh, international overclocking competition you know with all the competitors and contestants all over the world that's like really my first so i came there like almost unprepared because you know my all my all the contestants has been you know the, the well-known overclocker from their scene and from their country but me on the other hand in even in my country i don't, I don't rank that high i mean i lose a lot of competition really like a lot so when I got the opportunity to, to go there I was like okay let's just do it and try not to be the last place but uh, with a series of a really really good luck I came out first in the international competition and that actually changed my overclocking life as well compared to what we have in the past overclocking has been changed well, if you want to, uh, the things that change a lot is the, uh, it's not correct term, but it's uh, maybe it's difficulty. Overclocking difficulties has been really, really, really changed compared to what we have like eight, ten years ago. Right now, overclocking is really easy. Uh, like ten years ago, if you want to do overclocking, first you have to know your CPU. You have to know your motherboard and right now you already have this motherboard right now we have here that has like one button to overclock the cpu it's like presets from the manufacturer it has been really easy overclocking this past like three to four years that's like one of the difference and the second difference is eight or ten years ago we don't have motherboard or uh, pc hardware components that actually designed to do overclocking there is no such thing as overclocking great hardware. But right now, we already have all the manufacturers. Gigabyte have their own uh, SOC Force. Uh, Asus got their or ROG series. ASRock got OC Formula. MSI have their OC series. Like the four big motherboard manufacturers have their own line of specialized overclocking motherboard that's guaranteed to be like durable, has really good options in it, and basically, uh, if we are talking about competitive overclocking, anybody with a good components could get a like benchmark work record in those kind of boards. So yeah, that's the main difference: the difficulty and the, the component, uh, 
and right now we already have uh, the specialized component to do overclocking. Well, <laughs> that's a tricky question. Um, if uh, if we're saying about uh, easy overclocking means good or bad, well, I can say it's a little bit of both. A little bit of both because you know. Some, well, I don't, I don't dare say geek because geek has like negative <laughs> uh, tone to it, but well, enthusiasts, some enthusiasts like overclocking because, you know, they like to tamper with things. They like to, you know, uh, change the, the, the variables and the parameters of, uh, in, the, uh, the, in their hardware. And they like it because it's quite complicated. It's kind of challenging, but right now, the challenge factor is, well, I'll, I'll probably just be honest and say it's like reduced by a lot. But, but, when um, overclocking in the past is hard to learn, but after that it's okay or not that difficult to master. But overclocking right now, it's easy to learn, but it's really hard to master. Five years from now, uh, if we're talking about overclocking like five years from now, um, probably I'm uh, going to predict that the CPU is going to be a lot faster, a lot more cores perhaps, and well, if you're talking about five years, then maybe we see some CPUs from EMDs competing with Intel as well, because they say it's uh, next year, 2016, that they're, they're going to release their next CPU. But the main difference for me, I think, things are going to get a lot faster and maybe a lot trickier because you know sometimes uh, when we are when we are thinking about what the technology has given us like the fabrication process of the transistors right now we are, uh, we are at uh, 14 nanometers I think and I don't know because uh, uh, some transistor properties could get changed by different fabrication process and we cannot really predict what's going to happen with that kind of you know shrink we see in 14 nanometers and then we'll see about 10 nanometers and things are going to get changed and the thing that I'm hoping is that the, the clock speed uh, of the hardware actually scales to the performance or well there is more, more cores so we could still get you know uh, a good percentage out of it. If we're thinking about the overclocking machine in the future, I think that uh, the competitive overclocking is going to be get more bigger and bigger. Because right now with the HW but uh, making their uh, OEC Esports initiative, I think there's a lot of people are know, uh, know uh, that right now, okay, there is a competitive overclocking. Usually people don't know or even maybe don't care about overclocking and, well, competitive overclocking. But right now, we see a lot of people, even in Indonesia, where those people doesn't really have expensive components, we see like a lot of university students, even like budget gamers, interested in overclocking because, well, they want to tamper with stuff. They just want to, well, I don't know if this phrase is right, they just want to geek out with their hardwares. And then uh, they could get something out of it, while in the same time, they learn something out of it. So, well, for me, I hope that the competitive overclocking machine is getting uh, more bigger and, well, could be uh, a kind of like esports. Actually, if I if I might add, overclocking could be an esport. But well, there's some people that's actually against the idea of overclocking becoming esport because there is no uh, usually in the esport like game. You, you gotta have the reflexes, you gotta have the strategy, and then there's those people are saying like, overclocking have no strategy, you have to buy the best CPU. You bin the best CPU, you got the best component, and that's it. But under the right rules, under the right regulations, I think overclocking, competitive overclocking could be a lot more from what we have right now. So what I'm thinking is if there's some, I don't know, maybe, HW bot or somebody else make an overclocking to be a good show like well people like games because they're entertaining to see when we are looking at overclocking competition it's basically 
a bunch of guys, some people say a bunch of nerdy guys, playing with the hardware and they don't really know, they cannot relate to that like at all. If we could stream like the, the screens, see what they're doing with the hardware, making, making the competition much more you know, exciting, I think an overclocking could be made like into a show as well. And that's what I'm hoping. Okay, if I could change one thing, well, that's a tricky question. And uh, for me, overclocking is uh, good as, as it is right now. But, well, I've been thinking about, there's some people that are actually thinking very uh, negatively about overclocking. They're, they're saying that overclocking is like pointless, it's like useless. And, even even deep in the scenes, behind behind some you know behind some uh, behind the scenes, there are some a lot of dramas about ah this overclockers has a uh, best chips and he could win a lot because he got a lot of money and because he got like vendor background. If uh, there's one thing I could change, I wish I wish that overclockers had uh, had better attitude to overclocking because some people started overclocking because they want something and some of them actually doing it like for money and you know some uh, things could get not really good when you when you do something really just for you know the money and things could get uh, competition could get like dirty or something like that and uh, I think that some people need to change their uh, their view on overclocking and just love overclocking for what it is so if you are an overclocker that's starting in the competitive machine, my advice is very simple. Just get to know your hardware. You don't have to have uh, the highest end of hardware. You don't have to you know, have the best pin chips uh, in the world. But just really get to know your hardware, your processor, your cooling, and then try to, well, maximize it and takes things slow. There is a lot, like seriously, a lot of information could be found in the overclocking forums. You could, uh, I think one of the biggest is the overclocking.net, overclock.net, sorry, overclock.net. And then there's a lot of, you know, even in, I think there's some forum in like Germany and US and there's a lot of other forums. You just know where to look. And even though, uh, if, you, if you are like confused, don't know where to look, just put the word overclock into Google. You'll find like a bunch of contents that will help you getting started.